Welcome to this edition of OncLive Insights, Inside the Clinic, Acute Graft versus Host Disease. I'm Dr. Corey Cutler. I'm the Medical Director of the Stem Cell Transplantation Program at the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute in Boston. And I'm joined today by my colleague, Dr. Joseph Anton. I am the uh, Professor of Medicine at Harvard Medical School and the Emeritus Chief of Stem Cell Transplantation at Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. Dr. Cutler and I uh, have worked together for many years. One of our principal research interests and clinical interests is in the diagnosis and treatment of uh, acute and chronic graft versus host disease. So today we'll be talking mostly about acute GVHD, and perhaps I'll have you start, Dr. Anton, giving us a little bit of background on things like the overall incidence and the organs that are involved in acute GVHD. Well, let me start off by describing really what's going on with graft versus host disease. When transplantations are performed, there is a difference in histocompatibility antigens between the donor and the recipient. While we say patients, patients are fully HLA matched, uh, that's really an exaggeration. The only people who are truly perfectly matched are, are identical twins. And consequently, there are what we call minor histocompatibility differences that can be recognized by the immune system uh, and generate an immunological response that we call graft versus host disease. Um, these vary from one or two antigens to possibly as uh, a dozen or more uh, antigens, and thus it's sometimes difficult to predict the, uh, the potential severity of GVHD. Uh, but in essence, what's going on is, is that the T cells that are transferred from the donor to the recipient recognize minor histocompatibility antigens in the context of conditioning regimen and underlying inflammatory processes and generate an immune response that's essentially identical to what would be generated if there were an infection. Uh, the target organs are principally uh, skin, gut, and liver, uh, and these are organs that function as barriers to the environment. They're the ones that are most, that have the highest percentage of dendritic cells, antigen-presenting cells, and whose normal function is to generate an immune response. Um, the other factor that is important is the number of T cells that are introduced, which we'll, we will get to later in terms of uh, peripheral blood versus bone marrow transplantation, and increasingly the HLA disparity. Uh, we're increasingly doing transplants across HLA barriers, which is uh, irrelevant as well. So, Corey, why don't you <laughs> comment on the incidence of uh, and severity of GVHD in that context? So, acute GVHD occurs in approximately 30 to 35 percent of individuals who receive a transplant from a matched related donor, probably closer to 50 percent in individuals who receive a transplant from a matched unrelated donor, and probably at a slightly higher frequency in individuals who receive a transplant from a mismatched or half-matched or haploidentical donor. Cord blood transplants tend to have slightly lower rates of graft versus host disease, and as you already mentioned, acute GVHD really affects three organs only, the skin, the intestinal tract and the liver. We always grade and stage these organs. And so each individual is given an organ stage based on the percentage of body surface involvement for the skin, based on the volume of diarrhea and the number of bowel movements per day for the intestinal tract, and based on the level of rise of bilirubin for the liver. And we take the individual organ stages and come up with an overall grade of acute GVHD. And that's how, as transplanters, we can talk amongst each other and discuss severity. So in addition to the clinical presentation of GVHD, we now have the opportunity to use some biomarkers and some diagnostic pathology. What are your thoughts on the role of these, uh, these modalities today? Well, the, the, uh, the group at Mount Sinai, led by Jamie Ferrara has been, and uh, John Levine, has pioneered the use of biomarkers. Uh, to try and predict outcomes for GVHD. They don't actually predict the onset or the incidence of graft versus host disease, uh, but they can predict uh, the severity and transplant-related mortality. Uh, they are uh, still investigational, although, although you can obtain a, co a commercial measurement uh, of biomarkers. Uh, I, I, in my view, they're principally useful in order to inform decisions regarding clinical trials. For instance, if you have a biomarker that is elevated and suggests that a person is likely to have a high mortality related to graft versus host disease, they might be eligible for an investigational study of more intensive immunosuppression. While in contrast, if the patient had a low biomarker risk profile, uh, you probably would not want to start them on a, 
on a um, an investigational regimen, uh, that they're much more likely to respond effectively to corticosteroids.